Hard to believe another season is complete of NASCAR action at Bowman Gray Stadium. I'm Bob Dillner. Justin Boots Mincy is with us. <laughs> back from an Achilles injury. He's been suffering through the summer, but good to have you back for the finale. And what a finale it was with plenty of drama. It's good to be back. It's, it's like I've missed so a lot in, in eight weeks. And it, the Madhouse name lived up to the Madhouse. And it was so quintessential. Not chaotic, but quintessential Bowman Gray Stadium. And we saw flying cars. We saw <laughs> plenty of action tonight. And I don't even know how you could describe the entire night from top to bottom. Well, I think the biggest thing that everyone's going to be talking about, and this is kind of unfortunate because it overshadows a lot of the championships. Right. Brandon Ward wins the NASCAR Modified Championship. Yep. But if you think about it, everybody's going to be talking about what happened between Tim Brown and <laughs> Junior Snow, right. who's fighting to make a name for himself here. Yep. What was your take on all of that? Well, it was it was hard racing. It was, it was just hard racing. And they, it was just hard racing in the beginning. And it's an unfortunate Unfortunate events happened, and Junior Snow got turned around, and... Well, okay, hold on. You're supposed to be my <laughs> analyst here. <laughs> what happened there, in your opinion? Um, my opinion is Tim Brown, he, he knew he was playing smart, playing smart in the beginning, but when he's seen the 04, he's like, I need to do something. That 04 is rolling the top on the last few restarts. He got desperate. Tim Brown just got desperate, and he's like, I gotta do something, and he did something, and it was a bad move. It was the wrong decision to do, just wrong. So Brown puts the bumper to Junior Snow, Snow mm -hmm. spins, yep. and then the madhouse began. That's when it really started. And it, Are you surprised it, that Junior Snow retaliated, not just once, but twice on Tim Brown? Um, I'm not surprised. The first time, I'm not surprised. But, but here's the crazy part. What was insane is Jason Myers was in front of him, and if you look, Danny Probst, who is like a teammate to Tim Brown, he came up beside Tim to block so Junior wouldn't hit him. But Junior shot the gap, hit him, and I don't know if it was the tire or the rear end shifted over, and the second hit, I'm sorry, I love Junior Snow, I love you to death, snowman, but but that right there, um, that second shot, Tim was done. Tim was parked over there. He was done. He's about to drop the window net. That was unnecessary. Should not have done the second hit. So, so you think he was done over there? He was. Before that second hit? Oh, yes. See, I, I, he was. Know, I couldn't tell from my vantage oh, point because yeah. I was over there. And I thought he mm -hmm. might have been okay. Uh, but at the same time, okay, that's, that's good. I didn't know that. Yep. Uh, so Junior Snow, you know, Victor this year, mm -hmm. uh, now infamous for taking <laughs> Tim Brown out of his 13th, possible 13th yep. championship here. Yep. Okay, Brandon Ward wins the championship. And how about this? We go back to back years in NASCAR competition here at Bowman Gray Stadium with a champion not having won a race. Mm -hmm. That's yep. like, what? That, that's unheard of. It's, it's only happened five times. Okay. It's only happened five times. I know. Love the Nuggets. I know uh, Don Smith did it in '79. Um, Don Smith did it in '79. Tim Brown did it last year. But it's it's insane. It's like that never happens. You're like these people win all the time, and Brandon just like Tim last year, consistency, consistency, top five, top ten, top five, top ten, and even the twin 25s with the draws. He would finish like fourth or fifth. The draw would be a ten. He would start like fourth to fifth. So you, you just need to be you just need to be consistent. And he was consistent all year long. And I even talked to him in morning practice this morning. And I said, So, how do you like points racing? <laughs> it sucks. I do not <laughs> like it. I laughed. I said, Are you are you done? He's like, I don't care if I win or lose, I'm never championship points racing again. I'm done with points racing. I'm going for wins. I followed up. I said, so now you know why Bert loves to just race for wins. He smiled and said, yes. Now I know why, because it's a lot more fun and less stressful. Maybe here, but he's still going after another championship. Remember that. That's Second right. in points in the Smart Modified Tour, powered by pace -Matic. Yep. This Friday, Ace Speedway is going to be a lot of fun. If you can't make it there, we hope you do. You can yep. watch it live on Flow Racing. All right.
Sorry. How the heck did Chase Robertson win the sportsman race when he started 18th <laughs> and he had to finish fifth or better? You know, he was in the points lead and all those points contenders mm -hmm. were starting up front. Well, it's easy. It's easy to explain. And it's funny, right there is a cone. And that's how, that's how Chase Robertson won. Cone restarts, 40 lapper, cone restarts, double file cone restarts. Chase Robertson was good. He, he started to run good. Michael Adams, he's always killer in these 40 lappers and 100 lappers. And he put the bumper to uh, Zach Orr. He did. Finally. <laughs> oh, finally he wait, did. Wait a second. Mm -hmm. Finally he did because I talked to him a few weeks ago. He's like, he's like I, I'm pretty much out of the championship, but I'm just going to have some fun. And I think he had some fun. Yeah, and fun. He put the bumper to just about everybody else though he, this year. He did. Now, <laughs> so he's, now he's perfect. I think I think the only one he didn't put the bumper to was the pace car. But <laughs> well, we'll have to ask Jimmy Absher, see if there's any bump, see if there's any spots on there from Michael Adams. But Chase, he's just he was just perfect on the restarts. He had a great car tonight and he chose the outside. He was like, you know he was counting in his head, like where, where do I need to be? Where do I need to be? And yes, his spotter was helping him, but Chase methodically worked to the front and he was right there. That's all you have to do is just be right there, have a shot to win. And he was just right there at the end and he just, he claimed the championship and I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. I know you're a big Chase Robertson fan. Generational mm -hmm. talent here yep. and just a good kid all around. I mean, yep. how do you put him in perspective? Honestly, he's, he, I, I don't want to sound cliche, but inhuman. What I mean is you look in the span of 365 days, played football, went to what, like the third or fourth round with Oak Grove Grizzlies, went to the high school baseball national championship, and now he's a champion at Bowling Gray Stadium. So that kid's inhuman. Three different sports in one full year, like he's he's inhuman. Pretty imp incredible for him to win this championship yep. and, and the wins and the consistency. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was on point every yep. single week, and that's what was impressive. And here's the deal. Here's the deal. Going into last week, he had been losing points to Zach, losing points, losing, losing, and you know he he started to get a little worried. But last week, not tonight. Last week is what won him that championship, that statement win on the 100 lapper when everyone was having problems. That 100 lapper really put the stamp on his season and that, that's where I think honestly got him the championship. And now I, I touched on it earlier with Matthew, Chase Robertson now becomes the youngest sportsman champion at just 19 years, three days. He beat Philip Hill. Alfred Hill's son. He beat Philip Hill's record like 20 years and four months old in like 19 days. So he beat the record and congratulations, Chase. You and the Wally Heads. That, that's, for, that's a different story about the Wally Heads. <laughs> they, they got some good color hair, but yes. we won't get into that. Nope. One more thing about sportsmen, okay? <laughs> yes. Because a lot of people will be talking about this too. Yep. Uh, Tommy Neal, Amberlynn, King Kong down there, you know, in the corner last week. And, yep. you know, Tommy's banging, you know, Amber's car. <laughs> Amber sits out bananas on her car yep. here today. Yep. And then you can watch what happened. Amber Lynn posted a great onboard video on Instagram Ooh. of the incident between her and Tommy going down that back stretch and the hit that Tommy took. Oh my gosh. Like, mm. wow. But she did it for a point. Okay. Yep. And the point was, Tommy came up on it. Bottom That's line. That's right. Love Tommy. Love Amber. Tommy right. came up on Amber. But that was a scary deal. Yes. Um, we we were up there in the booth watching. And you know what? Like two weeks ago, three weeks ago, Daniel Beeson went over that same part in the Modified. And I was at home. My heart stopped. And tonight I was here watching it. And I looked over at Jacqueline. I had chill bumps. Because here's the thing. This is the second time Tommy has went over the wall in his career. The first time he went over the turn four wall before the bank was here, he went up over into the trees. His car was in the trees. <laughs> so I was like, I hope he's okay. And then the replay, 
when, when he hit the wall, the, the camera was on, on the patio. When he hit the wall on the replay, you can see it clobbered the barrier and it looked like, oh my God, like he's hurt. But he's okay. He's just, he's pulling a 2023 Bowman Gray and not 1987 Talladega when, the, when that person stole the pace car. He stole the, he stole the Gator. And was, he was. I, what, was, what was his intent is my question. Like, was he going to hit her in the go, door? I was wondering that. Was he going to hit yes. the door or something? Yes. Like, what, what were you going to do? That's what you got to love uh, yeah. about Bowman Gray. Good to have you yeah. back, dude. Yes. And we're looking forward to, obviously, uh, some cool racing coming out with a smart modified tour. Remember, I think we have three straight weeks of racing. Actually, do we have four? Maybe four straight weeks. Because we um, have Lonesome Pond. What we have, let's see. Okay, let's go through this. We have Ace. Then we yep. have um, Carteret. Carteret. Then we have Dominion. Dominion. And then we have Lonesome Pine. Then Lonesome we Pine. have, I think, one one week break. Yep. Okay, so four straight weeks yep. of racing. Then we pick it back up with the race, the race to the championship three. And convenient enough, it's championship three. It's three races left in the season. Two of them will be leading up to the season finale, which is, if you hadn't seen it yet, people, go to the smartmodifiedtour.com and look at the schedule. We had a schedule change. It's moved from Rockingham, to Little Rock, because of the track not being finished, to South Boston. So there's going to be a little interesting deal at South Boston that that Smart's going to do, and it's going to be so magical that no one's ever done it before. And I'm working on the deal. Matthew's working on the deal, and it's something that's truly going to be remarkable, and you don't want to miss it. Come out October. 14th to South Boston Speedway and see the fantastic racing there. And I'll go ahead and tell you, that's still two months away. The last time we were at South Boston, we had 28 cars. Yeah. 28 cars and everybody loves it. And I think that's an off weekend for the Wheeling Tour. You know, J.B. Fortin came down. So you never know, we might get some invaders too. You know, it's pretty remarkable too. You think about mods here, Bowman Gray and the Smart Modified Tour. How about Burt Myers bookending the season? The yep. win in the first race, the win in the last race. He's leading the smart points. And yep. Brandon Ward finishes second tonight, wins the championship second in points in the Smart Modified Tour. So thank you. And I just want to show you this. This is an interesting thing. We always talk about Bowman Gray Stadium being built around a football field. Yep. I'm going to stand up and we're going to show you they're already taking down the billboards because yep. the Winston-Salem Rams need to come here and start playing football on that field around or in the middle of this racetrack. How about that? Kind of sad that it's done, but can't wait for the Smart Modified Tour powered by Pacematic and all the races that we have coming up.